One of our viewers, Lauren Price from Florida, she sent us a story that she wanted us to cover. It's about how the VA remains broken and how it is that veterans across the country are being denied what's owed to them. And big part of this show is getting you involved. So we start tonight with Lauren in the People's Report. I welcome Lauren Price. She's a retired U.S. Navy veteran, and she served in Iraq. Lauren, welcome to Unfiltered. Thank you, Dennis, for having me. I appreciate it. Tell me, what is going on? Why did you want me to cover this story? Uh, on G the, everyone knows the VA is broken. This is not a news story. What is news is the disingenuousness that has continued for decades, really, but what is now being pushed to the front page about the VA's claim numbers. The VA likes to send out press releases saying that they beat the backlog, that they finally got it under 100,000. They actually just reported to the chairman of the House Committee on Veterans Affairs that they were under 80,000 as of January 2nd. And in fact, they're not. And we have worked with Congress for the last two years to provide them with the actual factual numbers and former Undersecretary Hickey actually even agreed with us that we were telling the truth, but VA stakeholders, and I'm quoting her, uh, were more important in what they wanted to see uh, being published. There are 13 claim categories. The VA only talks about four of those. All the other ones, the other nine, are not discussed. They are disclosed in a weekly report, but when we talk about the backlog, we talk about the 584,836 claims that are sitting in backlog. Those are veterans or their families or their widows and children. When the VA talks about it, they're talking about 75,395 claims and patting themselves on the back until they get a broken arm out of it. Lauren, let me cut you off for one second. I, I think it's important for our viewers to know. Um, you're terminally ill, aren't you? Yes, I am. Yeah. And you're terminally ill. I mean, the VA basically neglected you, did they not? Oh, yes. They actually flat out told me they wouldn't treat me. Can you, can you tell me in about 30 seconds what it is that they did to you? Uh, when I finally got to see a specialist at the VA, which took 15 months and four referrals, that specialist refused to treat my lung condition and told me that when my PTSD was cured, and I'm quoting him, that he would entertain treating my lung condition. But Lauren, what does PTSD and lung issues have in common? Why does one weigh to the other? Absolutely. Dennis, when you find out, please let me know. And I'm sure that my civilian pulmonologist would like to hear as well. How many more veterans do you believe, you know, you give us the numbers, how many more veterans do you believe are out there like yourself? Uh, and I've only got about 25 seconds left. How many, how many do you think are out there like you who have sort of suffered the same? 584,836, Dennis. Lauren, I want to thank you so much for your service, darling, and I wish you all the best. Thank you for sending us in the report. Thank you, Dennis. Coming up next, we're going to figure out how to solve the immigration problem in this country with our unfiltered panel. Well, we're going to try to. We'll be back.